Hi everybody, this is Annie from How's Annie. I hope you're well. I am doing A-OK, -okay, except for the fact that it's super hot here, so I brought my props. Um, otherwise, there might be a chance that I might drown in my own sweat within the next five minutes. <laughs> Nobody wants to see that, I think. So, um, I'm just doing this a short video. I just wanted to say I watched um, The Little Girl Who Lives Down the Lane this weekend, starring Jodie Foster when she was a kid. And there are some interesting parallels, I guess, uh, with Audrey. Nothing to, you know, write to your mother about, but still there is a little bit of meat around the bone, almost not, but we like to snack on tiny ideas here, so we will chew on it um all right so spoiler alert if you don't want to hear anything about that movie shut the video like stop the video run for your life go watch a tutorial about how to deal with your hair when it's 50 degrees outside and then let us know in the comment section what you've learned okay so in the movie it's basically the story of Rim, who's a 13-year-old uh, who was originally from England but moved to the state of Maine um, with her dad. Everybody thinks she lives with her, with her father, but he actually passed away from illness a while ago. They had deserted the mother, who seemed to have been a bad mom, and she eventually finds her daughter again. So Rim kills her mother, and that's only the beginning of... A couple of murders um, and corpses buried under that house really it's not as grim as it sounds um, but yeah it's a bit strange um, I haven't I haven't read the book so there might be differences in the book if you guys have read the book and uh, there's something super special worth mentioning, please feel free to do so in the comment section, of course. Um, so the things that are in any way related to Twin Peaks. Um, well, there is a hamster. The hamster's name is Gordon. I don't know if he has a last name. It's a cool hamster. However, this hamster has a very sad and cruel ending thanks to Charlie Sheen, who's a gross sort of pedophile who clearly doesn't have any love for hamsters. So Gordon, that's the number one link to Twin Peaks. Secondly, well, the fact that she doesn't really have a mother or, I mean, her dad was all right. He was a poet. The little girl actually likes Emily Dickinson. I thought I should mention that. Um, yeah, I, I feel like they're both orphans in a way. Um, I mean, because I started wondering after watching the movie, what about Audrey's parents? Like... You do see Sylvia Horn, but it's not like the closest mother-daughter relationship. And her dad was insane for half of season one and two. Um, but another thing that they have in common is that they are very independent young ladies. Um, well, they're not really that young anymore, but you know what I mean. Um, they're super fierce, resourceful, smart. They can outsmart basically anybody. Um, remember how Audrey was like almost like Cooper's investigation assistant uh, at some point. So they have like inside, like deep within, that's what they have, what they share in, in common. Um, also another interesting thing thing is Rim doesn't really have that many friends but she meets this guy called Mario and Mario is a magician and as we know magicians are 
pretty important in Twin Peaks. Uh, apart the, f I mean, there's Red, there's the little freaky grandson, who, according to some theories, might be Red as well. And um, I mean, who chance between two worlds to fire walk with me? It's the magician. So that can be random. Um, and uh, Mario, her magician friend, he is crippled. He walks with a walking stick. So uh, again, that's reminiscent of Charlie. Also, um, the man from another planet or what used to be the evolution of the arm. And is it necessary to remember that the evolution of the arm is the one quoting or repeating what Audrey says and he says that to Cooper so I'm wondering because Cooper doesn't know what happened with Charlie in that house and what seemed to have been Audrey's dreams so why would he tell Dale Cooper about this I am really not sure my theory right now is that this little tree with its head might act as an antenna of some sort and you know it likes electricity very much so that would almost make sense um but i still i i don't understand what's happening with audrey anymore the only thing i know is that maybe if her story is the story of the little girl who lives down the lane brings me hope in a way because she is so badass she'll survive at any cost she will and and sh she's mischievous but she's not like a bad person she was just like put in a situation and she needs to she needs to save her own bottom so yes if I had any editing skills, that five seconds ago would have been chopped off, but of course I, I can't, so it's it's there. And then I spent like 30 seconds talking about what I should have edited. It's funny. It's like my trademark. Um, oh yeah, and something else, and it's super ridiculous, like heads up. It's ridiculous, but it, when I watched it, and I don't know if you'll see... Mm. Wait. Oh yeah, so this, this, I don't know if you can see, oh, like that is a bit better. It's just something to hang your clothes on, like your jacket. But when I saw it, it kind of a little bit, slightly tiny, tiny, little bit, tiny bit, made me think of the owl symbol and Judy's sign. I mean, obviously, Probably not, but you know, when you don't have much, you take what you can and you get the most of it. <laughs> so I am super intrigued why this matters. I feel like it's like the fact that they repeated it twice this season it almost feels like you're a red herring yet again. And it doesn't at the same time. So yeah, that was my thinking face to conclude this video. If you guys have seen it and you, if you have any more feedback or observations, please let us know in the comment section. And again, make sure to subscribe so that you know when I do another video about whatevs related to Twin Peaks, of course. And um, there's also the Facebook page, How's Annie? So there you go. And thanks for all of you guys who have been writing to me and tweeting at me and everything. You guys are awesome. I'm very much enjoying reading your feedback and your thoughts. So thank you for watching. It's really nice to have a conversation other than with myself. So there you go. I'll talk to you guys later. 
and make sure, oh, my prop is gone. I'm gonna be like Cirque du Soleil. So make sure, make sure to use a fan so that you don't drown in your own sweat. Alrighty, bye.